Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our book club. Yes, welcome back indeed. We are your hosts. I am Mr. Daryl, and... And I am Miss Makam. Mr. Daryl, what are we discussing today? We're talking about The Man in the Iron Mask. Ooh, by Alexander Duma. Yeah, the story of the early reign of Louis XIV. Uh, it's been called an origin story for the king. Wow, and naturally, in a novel about Duma's musketeers, the characters play a huge role uh, in Louis' education. That's great, because I love the three musketeers. Mm -hmm, me too, very much. But of course, before we start discussing the book, we're going to look at our agenda. So uh, we will start the, with the vocabulary, then we'll talk about the author, Alexander Duma, and later we will talk about the summary of the book. Hmm. From there, we'll look at some of the characters, the aforementioned musketeers. Mm -hmm. um, we'll look at the setting in France and look at some of the main themes. Yeah, and of course, we will never forget the homework. Hmm. Who could forget the homework? <clears throat> never. So what's the first word, Mr. Darrell? Ah, so we move to the vocabulary section and the first word, Ms. Maka, is to disobey. To disobey which is mm -hmm. to neglect or to refuse to listen to someone. Our next word is treachery. Treachery. Uh, it's a noun and it's the violation of faith, uh, a betrayal of trust or treason. Galati mm or -hmm. Our next word is a verb and it is to capture. To capture. Uh, to take by force or by strategy. To take prisoner, to seize something. Mm. Our next word is plot, plot, um, it's a noun, plot. A secret plan or scheme to accomplish some purpose, especially a hostile, unlawful or evil purpose. Nachazin, schema, sujeti. We have a verb next, to destroy, to destroy. To put an end to, to extinguish, to kill, to slay, to render, ineffective or useless. Our next word is to fuse, uh, to fuse, uh, to join together. Um, Our next word is traitor, uh, traitor, a person who betrays another, a cause or any kind of trust. Yeah, so And the last word of today Suspicious, suspicious. It's an adjective. It's tending to cause or excite suspicion, uh, something, doing something that's questionable. Well now, let's ask our audience a question based mm -hmm. on the vocabulary that we've heard. If we look at the definition of treachery, we can see that it's presented as a negative word, of course. Uh, can it ever have a positive meaning? Can you ever betray someone's trust? in order to help them? I think some people might say yes, but uh, for me personally, I believe it is, a never, it is never a good thing. Uh, trustworthiness is the greatest value a person can hold for another person, and uh, to betray, that means that your value as a person is broken as well. Well, that's a very respectable answer. Yeah, exactly, of course. How important is it for you to trust a person, Mr. Darrell? And to be trusted by other people as well. Sure. It is very important. And as we uh, see, um, Duma also really appreciates this feeling, right? So talking about Duma, now it is high time to talk about the author. So he was born, Alexander uh, Duma was born in 1802, 1870 uh, is the year when he died. So Alexander was a well-known French writer um, and uh, his father was a reputable general in the French army. Uh, with the influence of his father as a young man, um, Alexander secured a job with Louis Philippe, um, the Duke of uh, the Orleans. Mm -hmm. He enjoyed early success before he started working as a writer in France, but later left France for Belgium uh, because of difficulties with the job. He stayed in Belgium for many years uh, before moving to Russia for several years, mm -hmm. uh, even visiting the Caucasus and then moved to Italy where he founded a newspaper. And this newspaper supported the reunification of Italy. 
Interesting. So he's one of the most successful French writers uh, and his books have been translated into 100 languages. Uh, most, of the, most of his works uh, were first published as um, serials um, and including the uh, Three Musketeers. Uh, his books have been used, as, uh, used in producing lots of different types of movies uh, back to the early 20th century. Uh, okay, well, in the, the year of his 200th celebration of his birth, uh, the French president of that time said the following quote, and I will quote it for you. With you, he was talking about Alexander Dumas, with you, we were D'Artagnan, Monte Cristo, or Balsamo, riding along the roads of France, touring battlefields, visiting palaces and ca uh, castles. With you, we dream. So basically, oh, we, we lived all those adventures because of Alexander. Yeah, sure. So now let's have a question to our audience. Looking at what uh, friend, the French president said in celebration of Dumas, why do you think he has been so popular for so long? I think Alexander Dumas has been able to write exciting and uh, universal stories and situations which capture the imagination of readers again and again no matter what age they are and this is the mark of a truly great writer. Wow, that's a nice answer. Thank you very much. So, Let's move on to the summary. Very good. Um, the Man in the Iron Mask in French, L'Homme au Masque de Fer, born in 1658 to 1703 um, he was a political prisoner, uh, in real life actually, famous in French history and legend who died in at the Bastille in 1703. The Bastille is a uh, prison, a famous prison, uh, during the reign of Louis XIV. Uh, there is no historical evidence that the mask was made of anything but black velvet. So uh, this, this um, fact that it's an iron in this book is probably Alexandre Dumas' uh, invention. Yes. Um, the 268-chapter novel first appeared in um, serial from between 1847 and 1850. The Vicomte is the third and final book in these series, D'Artagnan uh, romance series, that started with the Three Musketeers and 20 years after. The other two volumes in, v in the um, Vicomte are also called the Vicomte de um, Bregel. Uh, and Louise, Louise de, oh, Mr. Daryl, could you please uh, help me with that? No, uh, Louise de la Vallée. Uh, yeah, Louise de la Vallée. Um, back volume is roughly uh, the same length as the first three Musketeers uh, book. Mm -hmm. uh, the book is centered once again around the three Musketeers. Uh, they are the heroes. The narrative of the full book uh, takes place between 1660 and 1667. Mm -hmm. Do, during the reign of the young Louis XIV uh, from his ascension to the throne of France. Interesting. So the titular character, uh, the man in the iron mask, uh, is supposed to be the twin brother of the, of the Louis uh, the XIV, the mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, who was imprisoned uh, with his identity concealed by an iron mask by his mother and father. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Uh, few people are aware of this twin, uh, Philippe's existence, until his mother's friend, the Duchess uh, de Chevreuse, uh, lets the secret slip out to her for former uh, lover, Aramis, one of the musketeers. Yeah, and uh, Aramis creates a plan to replace um, King Louis um, the Fourteenth um, uh, with Philippe. The twin. In order, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, in order to create a more uh, susceptible king that he can use as a puppet. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to control the king. He's not, so Aramis the Musketeer is not a complete like hero, he's not yeah. a noble hero, he has his own de designs and plots. A bit manipulative. Manipulative, yeah. Mm -hmm. Aramis also plots to replace Louis with Philip as a puppet ruler for himself and Fouquet, and even intends to be become in turn the next pope. So his ambition is to become the next pope of mm. Rome. Oh, but when his plan begins to backfire, more than just Aramis's will pay for his cruel intentions. Good, so you didn't give away the, uh, the, the ending. Of course not. <laughs> uh, there's a question we have now for the audience. 
Um, now, there's a legend that the man in the iron mask really existed. Do you think that this is a cause of the novel's popularity? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, it is not the cause of the novel's popularity. Uh, I mean, uh, Dumas wrote an original story of adventure, which would have been uh, a great tale, even if uh, it didn't have um, legendary beginnings. Uh, very good answer. Yeah, Dumas had such skill to mm -hmm. create tales, whether they were based on reality or not. Yeah, exactly. He also edited some of his oh, own yeah. things. Like the Iron Mask. Yeah, exactly. So now, who creates this uh, magnificent story? So it is time to talk about the characters. So the very first character is D'Artagnan, of course. So he is a former musketeer and current captain of the musketeers. Um, he's very brave and very loyal uh, as being as excellent uh, fighter. Um, he is introduced to the three musketeers in the first original book and uh, when he goes um, to Paris where he wants to become a musketeer and he ends up uh, to be helping them in a fight. Mm -hmm. That was the classic story of the three musketeers. Yeah. But now by this novel, uh, he's the only one of those friends who's still a musketeer and mm -hmm. still in the service of the king. And he has served for the king uh, for many years now. Yeah, and he actually loves his friends. D'Artagnan really loves his friends and knows them pretty well. He is the first person to detect, uh, to suspect that Aramis uh, is up to something in the beginning of the book. And when he realizes the full extent of the plot, only promises to save Aramis and not arrest him. So he, because of the friendship, I think he mm -hmm. decides so. Very good point. Uh, I'd say that add this as well. Uh, he's the only one, basically, to put his friends first mm -hmm. and uh, is probably the most moral character in the book. Yeah. Our next character we've already mentioned is Aramis. So Aramis is perhaps best summed up um, by his quote from the book. Uh, and the quote goes like this, soldier, priest and diplomat, uh, gallant, greedy and uh, cunning, Aramis took the good things in, um, in this life, uh, so stepping stones to rise to the bad ones. Generous in mind, um, if not noble in heart, he never did ill, but for the sake of shining a little more brilliantly. Uh, Aramis is the hardest to pin down, uh, not only in the book, but in the entire series. It's hard to get an understanding of what makes him work, what makes mm -hmm. him tick. Uh, he's an agitator, uh, often the one to come up with the musket musketeer's greatest schemes, mm -hmm. um, both successful and unsuccessful. In The Man in the Iron Mask, this book, Aramis' desire for power over France does get in the way of his friendships and loyalty mm. for a little bit. Uh, however, a true musketeer, uh, till the end, um, Aramis actually does appear to love those he deems friends very much. He agrees to be arrested to Belle Isle as long as Parthos can go free and is said to cry for the first time in his life upon uh, Porthos' um, death. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when he died. Ironically, um, Aramis is the only musketeer left alive at the end of this book. Uh, yeah, so that's sad. <laughs> the next character is Porthos. Yeah, Porthos um, is one of the original musketeers and best known for being a gentle giant unless he's fighting and then he uses his amazing th strengths um, yeah, uh, against his enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, Porthos is a uh, Aramis is probably his best friend uh, in the whole book series, mm. and he dies trying to protect him. Uh, he's surprisingly clever. Uh, he's a moral man who willingly goes along with Aramis' plans to overthrow the king, but he has to stop and think about the moral implications as well. Uh, so uh, he's, uh, he's a complex character. Exactly, he is, and uh, actually, uh, Porthos's death is uh, the most remarkably um, expressed, shown in the book. Although he was a man of few words, he is very missed by his friends. Mm, so leaving impact, mm -hmm. despite saying not much. Exactly. Uh, and the last musketeer, Athos. Now, before the start of the, uh, the novel, Athos has moved away to live with his adult son. This is why he has much more of a limited role in this, uh, in this book. 
Uh, he's revealed uh, later to have started a fight with the king, King Louis XIV, and as a result, he left the Musketeers and has retired uh, by, this, by the, the, the events of this book. Mm -hmm, exactly, and Arthur spends the um, majority of his life, um, like in, in the storyline, uh, thinking about how to uh, send his son, uh, Raoul, um, to, to the battle in Africa. And he's, he believes that his son will die in this battle, and when this everything turns out to be true, he dies uh, shortly after, and uh, he, believing that life is not worth living without his son. Honorable men. Now our last character, we'll leave the musketeers aside mm -hmm. and we will look at the man in the iron mask, Philippe. At the beginning of the story, we learn that Philippe is the twin brother of the king who was locked away as a child so as not to provide any challenge to the king's throne. It is not revealed why he was chosen to be locked up. Yeah, and actually Philippe is used as a pawn uh, in his brother's kingly rule uh, for the first half of the uh, of his life, and then of course he is used as a pawn by Aramis. Yeah, when he wanted to control, uh, take control um, over France through him. Uh, so only to be abandoned once again, just as the way by his parents did. Uh, for the for, for this reason, Philippe is a tragic character. A bit, uh, a person who is easily manipulated. Yeah, despite being the title character, uh, we rarely see him. We see him very little in the book. And he gets to be king for a few chapters. Um, the last we see of him, before D'Artagnan leaves his prison island, he's where, where he's left to, to wear the mask and he's, no one knows of his identity. Uh, and we, did, we don't really find out about him after. Mm -hmm. So, as we've already um, shown the characteristics of our main characters, now let's have a question to our audience. So, why have the three musketeers been such classic characters in literature? I think the main reason is that each character is very memorable in their own way and represent friendship in their own way. Uh, I think readers love to see them together as a band of brothers. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, um, musketeers together, yeah? Thank you very much. Um, that's a nice answer. So, now, Mr. Darrell? Let's move to the setting. Mm -hmm. now, have you ever wanted to go to France, uh, Ms. Maka? Uh, it's not my top country, but yes, I would love to. Well, if this is a way to get into 17th century France. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, since, obviously, it's a work of fiction, uh, historical fiction, the setting plays a huge role. Uh, he tries to get some details right, and some, some are invented, of course. Uh, Dumas uh, draws on the actual history of, of King Louis XIV's court mm -hmm. uh, to build a believable version of events. Um, he's, but keep in mind, he's literally rewriting history. He changed the, the composition of the mask from velvet to mm -hmm. iron. And so uh, he, he's, not a, he's not afraid to change details to suit the story. Yeah, and what about the where part? Um, so it happens in the court of King Louis the Fourteenth, and uh, since the story is mostly driven by the plot and the dialogue, uh, the settings in the Men of the Iron Mask uh, usually do not matter so much. The characters usually um, hang out in some kind of uh, chambers or like chamber bed chambers, um, but in some kind of prison cell or uh, or audience hall. Mm -hmm. And Duma does have a tendency uh, to stage um, some things and the settings in a very beautiful way. Uh, and characters, however, uh, he really pays attention uh, to the settings of a scene. Mm -hmm. Now, the theatrical quality of the scene tends to reflect Duma's previous uh, career as a dramatist. Mm -hmm. mm. There's, you know, there's a scene with a black horse that runs through plowed fields. It's very visual. Um, and then the scene with the destruction of the Grotto, very spectacularly described. So he, he has this kind of uh, theatrical um, quality to him. His quieter scenes are also given quite a lot of attention. Uh, the scene between Aramis and Philippe in the forest is a good example, uh, as you'll see if you read it. And mm -hmm. Athos and Raoul's uh, grave sites at the little chapel are described in really amazing detail. 
So, oh, Mr. Daryl, so I think that the reader should expect lots of um, adjectives describing the scenes mm -hmm. in Alexander Dumas' um, books. Mm -hmm. well, that could be the fun of it. Now, mm -hmm. what about a question for the audience? How would you describe the writing style of Dumas? Well, uh, speaking from description you have given us so far, I would say that uh, Dumas is like uh, a modern uh, blockbuster uh, movie maker. And if, if he was alive today, I believe he would be making uh, action movies with millions of dollars of budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds about right. Mm -hmm. He's making like historical, uh, historical epics. He might have made like Braveheart or something. Yeah, something like this. So um, now let's talk about the major themes of the book. And the first theme is friendship of course, um, because we all remember the famous quote from the Musketeers, right? All for one and one for all. So friendship is the, is the backbone of the man in the iron uh, mask, um, but it rapidly um, disintegrates uh, throughout the book. Mm -hmm. And the four men, once bow bound by the motto that I've already mentioned, uh, have grown apart from one another. And there's several reasons for this. Uh, there are political reasons, familial reasons, family reasons, and career motivations that bring them apart. They're one strong friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it was simple, and now it's a complex situation. And do you think Duma wanted to say that uh, there are some reasons that might um, have a problem between the friends? Uh, I think Duma was a bit of a realist all as well. He knew the friendship uh, could never be idealistically perfect mm. as you live your life. Things are going to happen, you're going to break apart, you're yeah. going to come together. Yes, yes. So the second main theme is principles. Honor is the governing code of the, of the conduct for all men that we've already described for you uh, and those who are the characters in the men of the Iron Mask. And it determines whether um, or not uh, the four musketeers uh, will be on your side. So in order to be honorable, the men sometimes must act counter to their own self-interest. Mm -hmm. So they should be they should go maybe against their own principles but um, for uh, for the principles that the group has yeah um, now they were best of friends in the original three musketeers story but here they have different responsibilities they have different challenges to think about and so they start uh, breaking apart from each other Yes, and it may just uh, be a lamentable side of uh, human nature to give some um, strategy uh, against one another for our own benefit. Uh, the Man in the Iron Mask um, is a study um, in loyalty and friendship and how power can actually affect them both. Mm -hmm. So this book is kind of the darker version of the original um, Three Musketeers story. Mm -hmm. Um, the past figures heavily in this novel, and by the end, King Louis XIV has ushered in an era of absolute power. Historically, that was true. Uh, his word is law, and he accepts no dissent. Yeah, and one way to view this book um, is to see it as the end of an era. Uh, so the dissolution of uh, a famous friendship, musketeers um, and the end of fractured loyalties within a kingdom. Yeah, so essentially he's talking about France of that time and making a comment mm -hmm. of how when France fell apart uh, because of various factions, so did the musketeer friendship fall mm -hmm. apart. Exactly. Our next topic, of course, is justice, mm -hmm. uh, right? Justice is this novel's, um, uh, in this novel, is uh, whatever the king says it is. So mm -hmm. king said that this is fair, and then this whole, whole kingdom would agree. Um, which, of course, makes us wonder exactly how just the system uh, is. Unlike what we saw in the Three Musketeers, justice in the men um, in the iron mask um, is a subjective issue. Mm -hmm. Keep this in mind, not a single character in the novel receives a just punishment mm -hmm. uh, at any point. It also seems that no one is really concerned with justice in the novel. They're all doing whatever they need to, to survive. Yeah, maybe it's because of the um, the problems with the king, or they wanted to change the king, so uh, the was system a was a bit weak. Yeah, it was a difficult time, and uh, the king was 
becoming more and more powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, so more authoritarianism, more um, less freedom. Yes, exactly. So, of course, before we say goodbye, we are going to wrap up everything. So we started with the French writer Alexander Dumas. Mm -hmm. Then we looked at the story, of course, uh, the story of the man in the iron mask and uh, the, the musketeers. Yeah, and the people who actually make up the story, this, uh, these are the main characters, the musketeers uh, who fight very bravely, right? Okay. And of course, looked at the setting. We, uh, we mentioned that it was in the 17th century, and it was in France in the court of King Louis XIV. Yes, and of course, um, we could never skip this main theme, friendship, um, that we discussed, and also justice and the principles. Mm -hmm. Now, one more time, let me just go through the uh, vocabulary list uh, mm -hmm. one last time. They were, if you remember, at the very beginning, to disobey, treachery, to capture, plot, to destroy, to fuse, traitor, and suspicious. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Darrell. And, of course, now it is time to give you a homework. Uh, yeah, we have a well, slightly uh, thought-provoking question, I suppose. Uh, there are many legends about the real historical uh, man in the Iron Mask. He might, have, he might have been the king's brother, who knows. But why does it matter that legends are sometimes taken to be historical fact after the novel has been written? Uh, because now a lot of people do think that the, the uh, man in the Iron Mask was the king's brother, but there's no fact behind that. Mm. Um, is this a danger with the power of novels? So that's the main question there. Mravali legenda arsebops istoriuli gmiris shesakheb. Katsi rkinis nigabit. Shesadzloa igi mepis zmatski igom. Rato maris mishnelovani rom novelepshi igeneben legendeps. That kweni azrit. Aris tuara es sabtre novelistuis. Radgan shesadzloa mat shwanairat armuadginon realuri istoriuli pakti. Great, and they can send that, those answers to the address you see on the screen. Well, it was Maka, I think we've, uh, we're done with 17th century France. Exactly, and all those fighting scenes and friendship. Uh, and now we have to end all those fighting scenes and friendship. Um, it was really interesting to discuss this book with you, with the audience. Indeed, and thank you to the TV audience as well. Mm -hmm. Of course. Thank you very much. Now it is time to say goodbye and see you next week. Mm -hmm. Until next time, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>